Hey guys, Thunder E here, and we are back with another professional camera review from my buddy here, Mr. Marion Cell. Hello. Yes, this time we're checking out the LG V40 ThinkQ. Now, first question is Have you ever actually used an LG smartphone? No, I've never used one. All right, so this is the first time he was using this bad boy here. And as we have Alaska roaming around here, so don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> Uh, now, this also is the first device that truly has a three camera setup. Now, granted, we checked out the Huawei, which yes. had the P20, which has three cameras, although one of the cameras was a monochrome. Yeah. Now, this time we've got a standard lens, we've got a telephoto, and we've got an ultra wide yeah. in there. And I know when I told you, we we're really excited about having just three cameras uh, to check out. The lenses, yes. The lenses, yeah. Yes. So, at this point, I you know this quite well. Uh, definitely check out his stuff, though. He is a great photographer, so go ahead and follow him. But right now, we're going to jump into some of the images that you took, mm -hmm. and he can give his breakdown of what he thinks about the LG V40. Thank you. All right, let's do it. All right, here we go. So, obviously, I took this phone into the ocean, which was really, really fun, especially using this wide-angle lens, which gets me so close to the action. So I asked my friends to drive as close as they can to me and the camera, which is almost a little bit risky. But it was so much fun taking this phone into the water, swimming with the phone in my hands and actually diving through waves. It was <laughs> something I've never done before. I want to say that the screen does react very well when it's wet compared to, uh, well, my comparison is always the iPhone because that's the one that I have in my pocket. Uh, and when the iPhone screen gets wet, then sometimes it jumps through the modes. Uh, this phone, the LG, does not do that that much. Um, nonetheless, I did not use the professional mode to take these photos because the professional mode did not allow me to do bursts. And it was much easier for me to capture this photo using the burst, which takes 73 photos in a row. And then at the end of it, you can select which one you want to have. Or you can select all of them. So um, looking at it on the screen of the telephone, was looking great. Looking at it on this screen, it looks cool as well, but zooming in unfortunately reveals that the quality is not just there. Um, everything looks a little too much sharpened. Everything looks a little bit rough around the edges. There is, you have the feeling that there is detail, but then once you go a little bit too close, you realize there's not that much detail. It, it, um, it must be the sensor, I believe. Uh, or the software behind it. I am not very happy about it, as in you can easily go ahead, send these photos to your friends via text message, and if they look at it on their mobile phone, they'll be happy about it, but zooming in a little bit too much or attempting to print it at the big size is just not going to do it, at least not for me. Um, nonetheless, don't forget how much fun it was to take these photos. <laughs> it's really awesome being so close to the action and being able to get everything into the frame. And I just want to show you, get you an idea of how close I actually was. So this is the burst. And I'll accelerate a little bit. You see how close my friend drives by. And each of these shots is basically a high-res shot. It's a JPEG, so it's not a RAW file because I was in the uh, automatic mode, not in the pro mode. I could have done raw files in the pro mode, but then I couldn't have shot the bursts. So, pretty awesome. In this photo, I just cycled through the three lenses to compare or to show you what's possible from one single standpoint. So I am on a sailboat and uh, here you get the real idea. On the wide angle shot, you get the real idea where I am. I'm actually under the sail. There's another sailboat cruising by in front of New York City. Um, the wide angle, angle lens is really a lot of fun to play with. Um, looking at how much you get out of it, it feels like it should be a fish eye, but the lines are straight. It's, it's pretty awesome. Um, weirdly, um, no, not weirdly, but in the manual mode, if you try to change the focus of the wide angle lens, you, you realize there is no focusing of that lens. So this lens just relies on having enough depth of field because of its wide angle character. So the focus is static. Um, which is okay, you basically have always everything in focus when you use the wide-angle lens. Um, but I wanted to show you something that I think is interesting. So the, the normal lens has, um, in my perception, the highest amount of detail. If you zoom in and you look at the details, then you see it looks, it looks much nicer than the, the long lens in particular. I think it seems like the long lens, in my perception, has the lowest amount of quality. 
Um, so I even went ahead and I tried something and LG is going to hate me for this. I took the normal, the 50 millimeter lens photo and I basically created an artificial digital zoom here in Photoshop by just increasing the file size. So by doing this, uh, I go to, I basically increase the file size to something that's now 200 megabytes instead of 35 megabytes. And I zoom in all the way to 100% zoom. Here's the Empire State Building. Comparing this to the 100% zoom on the long lens, which is this here. Sorry, arranging windows. And it seems to me like the uh, normal lens digitally zoomed has a very comparable amount of detail to the long lens. So something is odd here, LG. But here are two more quick long lens shots, just because I like that feeling of a long lens. The wide angle lens gets me a little more excited because it's something that's very playful. The long, the long lens almost has a little more of a grown up feel. So I like what I'm seeing here, unless I zoom in, then once again, I'm confronted to missing sharpness, missing details. But um, that's maybe because I'm spoiled of the Huawei P20 or maybe the Samsung S9. But then there's something here which was interesting. Um, the Statue of Liberty was actually very far away. I chose the long lens and the full maximum digital zoom. And after shooting this photo, the camera actually thought about the photo for a minute and tried to optimize it. I'm very surprised about the amount of detail that the camera got out of this shot. Uh, it looks pretty good like at this zoom stage. Please don't zoom in because it looks really rough. But um, it's good enough to send to a friend as a text message. It's definitely satisfying quality for that usage. Yeah, two more wide angle shots just to show you how much you really get out of it. So on this one, you see that my feet are actually in the frame and the, the whole length of the boat is in the frame. It's a 30 foot boat. Uh, what happened to me all the time is that I had my finger inside the frame on the wide angle lens because it is really wide. I absolutely love it. It's so much fun to play with. And uh, here, once again, it's just amazing how much detail you get into, no, sorry, detail, how much you get into the shot. Like the full sailboat is in there. That's quite something. I've never seen this on a smartphone. All right, I did two quick night shots with the phone just to see what's up and what it can do. So um, let me put it like this. I think I've been spoiled by the Huawei uh, P20 and by the Samsung S9 because they have done an outstanding job at night shots. Um, here you have the very wide angle lens at night. You see how the, the, the backlight basically blurs out a whole scene of the photo. Uh, details, I don't feel like zooming in. It doesn't make me happy. Uh, I've got one more here with a long lens and the same thing. Uh, it is, you can take photos at night with this phone, <laughs> but, uh, but well, I've been spoiled by phones that did an outstanding job at night shots compared to this one. For the portrait mode, so we got ourselves a very expensive, handsome model to do this test. And um, I mentioned before that I'm not the biggest fan of the portrait mode. And as of right now, um, there was no phone that fooled me as in like, uh, where I really had to like look for details to find out if it's an artificially created background blur or if it is an organic background blur. So in this particular case, there are those typical areas where the background actually shines through or the sharpness of the background shines through. Um, the quality is actually quite all right, but uh, yeah, you see it has its trouble getting, getting the right sections out of focus. But, but well, some people like this effect and it, it helps to isolate the subject from the background to create like, to, to make the audience of the photo focus on what's important. And in this particular case, well, the phone did an okay job at achieving this. So you use the camera, yeah. you've seen the photos. Yes. Some final thoughts. So final thoughts, the uh, playing with a wide angle lens uh, is great. I, I really enjoy it because you feel like um, you feel like you're much, much closer to the action. Also looking at the photo, you, you get the sensation that the, the, the photo was just taken right there in the middle of the action. And it gives you a really nice connection to the subject of the photo. So I got really excited when you showed me how wide angle this lens is. And that was a lot of fun. 
Um, images, looking at them on the screen, looking like sending them to your friends via a text message or whatsoever, and they look at them on the screen, so you post them to social media, it's all perfect. I would not want to go ahead and attempt to try to print one of those. I'm sorry, LG, the quality is not sufficient. The normal lens has the highest quality in my perception, just, um, just looking at the files, it seems to have the nicest details, but it's still not... Like, I've been spoiled by the Huawei P20, I believe, which had a very, very sharp lens and uh, sensor. Seems like the, it had the most detail, I believe, out of the cameras we have tested so far. Mm -hmm. So far, yeah. Um, yeah, nonetheless, what I really enjoyed was going into the water and actually swimming with a phone in my hand through the ocean. After anyone told me it's waterproof, I just went ahead and tried that and it worked out really, really well. I, that's fantastic. Okay, so, so there you have it guys, uh, he likes the three lenses, yeah. um, doesn't like the image quality once they're off the phone. Yes. So hopefully LG improves that and we see something better from them coming next year. Yeah. But the concept of three lenses on a smartphone I think is something that appeals to you quite well. Yes, absolutely. And it's really easy to switch through them. Like it's just one fingertip away to go to like closer to the wide lens. It's really fun. Professional mode as well, it's very fun. Mm -hmm. like, uh, weirdly, it's kind of uh, sitting on the side in a, like a vertical 90 degree rotated manner, so it takes a little moment to get used to it because it's like not intuitive, yeah. but, but it works very well. And once you figure that out, no, no hesitations, no struggle on that end. Yeah. Okay. Pretty, pretty good tool. All right. Well, so there you have it, guys. Those are his thoughts on yeah. the LG V40 Thank you. If you've got any questions, any comments, uh, leave them down below. We'll try to answer them for you. Definitely go ahead and follow him on, uh, not Twitter, he's not on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, it is Marion Cell. I'll have the link for you guys down below. And we'll also have the images for you to go ahead and check out. If you have any questions, any comments, leave them down below, guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos from myself and Marion. And always enjoy your entertainment. Bye-bye.